All you need to make these is 20 gauge copper wire, four millimeter beads, and maybe some earring hooks and jump rings to match. And that's it. Fun. Cut yourself some, yeah, I don't know, five or six inches, seven or eight, whatever you feel like. Just cut a little piece of wire. You can use a lot of scrap leftover wire can be used to do these. And you just take your four millimeter beads and you just start stringing them on. Make sure they, the hole fits the 20 gauge first. You could do 22 gauge if you, know, if you need to get a thinner wire to fit the hole. But you can stack them, you can stagger them, you can move them around. There's, there's really no right or wrong. Like, you can roll them like that and put the next one on. You can just stack a bunch at once. You can make some loop-de-loops and put another one on. And this is, this is antique, kind of a reddish burgundy copper color. And these are like pinkish, kind of a cat's eye. So I feel like that's a nice combo, but you can really do any color combo you like. And the idea is when you're left with about an inch or inch and a half on each side, then just kind of find a way to bring it, bring it together. Like basically fold one end over like that and wrap the other end, maybe like bring it around and just twist them up. Give them each a little curly cue or something. And just tuck them in, finish it off so they're not, you know, there's no sharp ends sticking out anywhere. But there's really, other than that, there's no right or wrong. You can just have these little clusters end up any way you want. And they're, they're pliable, so they're firm enough if you uh, make the wire pretty tight that, you know, they're, they're going to pretty much stay in that configuration. But if you want, you can also kind of mold them around, mush them around to make them fit the way you want. So got a lot of options there. They pretty much all you have is options, just unlimited options. The most important thing is just don't overthink it. Just slap them on, throw on some more. Have fun, experiment, smush them around. Like, just go fast because you're going to need to string a lot of them pretty much to do this the way I'm showing you. And you're going to need to um, thread, do a lot of little threading. And if you're overthinking it, it's not going to come out the way you planned anyway. So you're just going to stress yourself out. But if you just keep moving fast, then it's you're not going to have any expectations. And it's just going to come out however it comes out. And you're going to love it. And that's kind of an allegory for life. Like... We try to overplan our lives, and when do our lives ever come out according to plan? I mean, once in a great while, things might go according to plan, and it's like this amazing, pleasant surprise, like for once. But that just goes to show you, it usually doesn't. And meanwhile, if you just enjoy it and go for the ride, but you're doing things, you're doing things fast, you're doing things hard, you're doing things, you know, with a definite push, then stuff just happens, and stuff lines up, and stuff happens not in any way you would have ever imagined. And it's usually better than what you would have imagined. Meanwhile, those times you just sit in there overstressing and overthinking, you find you're not going to do almost anything. And then, then nothing happens. And then you're just left there thinking what could have happened and what did I do wrong? And there's just more thinking and you're just, you know, and you just torture yourself. Whereas if you were just doing things, you wouldn't know what would happen, but something would happen. And that something would be a bazillion times better than sitting on the couch torturing yourself about what you should have done. So I have kind of a line here and I want to smush into more of a cluster. So just kind of move them around. And more importantly, just get the wires together. Give myself that double twist and make each of these into a swirl, and then the rest of it will just figure out. This one, I'm just kind of did a bead and a loop and a bead and a loop and a bead and a loop, and it kind of gives it the, the feeling of like a, a berry and a leaf, a berry and a leaf. Um, the one thing I will say is try to make these tight as you're going. Try to make your loops tight. Try to make the connections around the little beads tight. And one way that you do that is 
every time you make a loop, don't settle for the loop sticking out too far and don't settle for the loop being too big. You want tight little things. So make your loop, don't stress over it, but then roll it, roll it, roll it, and that gets it tighter and tighter. Pinch it, pinch and roll, pinch and rolls. Do the same thing when you have a bead on the line. Just pinch and roll it. Like it's way out there, right? Oh, it's way out there. Well, you can slide it down further or you can, even there, look, it's sticking way out there. Well, roll it, roll it in tighter. And where do these swirls go? You can leave them out like that. You can hide them, tuck them under, or you can uh, carefully place them right into the center of a cluster. Give it like a nice look. Now you just kind of line them up in a way that you think would look good. And you either add one jump ring connection if you want them to spin or two jump ring connections, two different places if you want them to kind of just kind of wave. <laughs> 